Winter will officially arrive in a few days, but its gloomy effects are already impacting the survival of our population, our businesses, and our economy. As the pace of economic deterioration picks up speed due to the new restrictions in economic activity, our nation keeps being devastated on several different fronts, and the consequences of it won't be solved with the arrival of a vaccine, nor with a utopian V-shaped recovery. We will be seeing the results of this winter's economic devastation for years. That's what we will be talking about in today's video. Recent studies have been warning that we are about to lose millions of businesses. At this point, over half of small business owners have affirmed that they believe the worst is yet to come. And almost 40% of our businesses can't afford to pay the rent to continue to operate in the months ahead. Consequently, with tens of millions of jobless Americans struggling to survive and desperate not to fall into poverty, desperation is emerging everywhere the eye can see. This is not an economic recession. This is a ravaging economic collapse. So, welcome to today's Epic Economist video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel to keep updated with future videos. The current economic situation is making business owners fear they won't be able to make it to the start of spring. Sectors that rely on face-to-face -face interaction have been particularly impaired by so many rounds of shutdowns, and this time might be the final round for many of them. Your favorite bars, restaurants, coffee shops, gyms, hairdressers, and independent retailers may not be around once the restrictions are lifted. And even before that, many have disclosed they will barely be able to put their feet into 2021 since their one blow away from bankruptcy. As Michael Snyder described in his latest article, in some states such as California and New York, politicians don't seem to care that they are literally destroying millions of hopes and dreams. If and when this health crisis finally ends, they will get to go on with their normal lives, but vast numbers of their constituents will not. There will be no normal when our reckoning day arrives and we as a nation will have to face the effects of nearly a year of reckless policies in action, which have constantly put our citizens and our businesses' lives in jeopardy. Right now, according to a brand new U.S. Chamber MetLife poll, 62% of small business owners are concerned with further impacts of the health crisis, saying they believe the worst moment of the crisis is still ahead of them. Approximately half of these owners affirmed their operations would permanently close within less than a year if the business environment doesn't show any improvement soon enough. The same poll has also highlighted that most small business owners are in desperate need of federal assistance, with nearly 74% of the owners saying they need further aid to weather the fallout of the crisis. That figure rises to 81% for minority-owned businesses. These staggering numbers are consistent with what other recent surveys of small businesses have found. Currently, we have roughly 30 million small businesses in our country, and a loss of about one-third of them would mean 10 million businesses would be wiped out of our economic landscape. Can you imagine what that gap would do to our economy as a whole? How many more jobs would be lost with the obliteration of these businesses? It would take decades to repair the damage caused by this imminent downfall. When small business owners keep pleading Congress for more help, that's a red flag signal that the whole sector is on the brink of a major meltdown. 
As we head towards a dark, cold winter, a considerable amount of them can't even afford rent. According to an Alignable Rent Survey, 35% of all small businesses in the United States cannot pay their rent this month. That's up 3% from 32% in November. For women-owned businesses, 38% couldn't pay their rent, also an increase of 3% from 35% last month. Analyzing demographically, the biggest struggle is seen amongst minority-owned businesses, with 49% of them reporting that they wouldn't be able to afford their rent in December, a figure that is 5% higher than it was in November. But devastation is happening in multiple industries. For example, 61% of restaurants can't pay their rent this month, which is a rise of 19% from 42% in November. Together with beauty salons and travel hospitality businesses from which 46% and 43% respectively couldn't meet their rental payments this month, this rounds up the top three most affected businesses, but many others are also in deep trouble. When businesses don't even find the means to pay rent and stay open, we can clearly understand that we have gotten to a point when there's no way to argue that this is simply a recession, when over a third of all small businesses in the world's richest country can't make enough revenue just to keep their doors open. That is called an economic collapse. To give you further proof, let's just spare a moment to examine what's been going on with federal tax receipts this year. In a recent note to Zero Hedge, former chief economist and Alliance Bernstein, Joseph Carson, has pointed out how weak tax receipts sending a signal of economic distress. The unarguable need for urgent federal support is a clear picture of the grim state of numerous segments of the economy of the United States, and federal withheld income tax receipts represent a current and complete analysis of how deep the economic deterioration actually goes. Differently from other economic data series like household and payroll employment, which are based on a sampling of a small percentage of the working population and businesses, tax receipts provide a broader spectrum of the impacts suffered so far. Carson outlines that now we're nine months into the downturn triggered by the health crisis, federal gross withheld income tax receipts declined 13% from a year ago which is very much in line with the average drop of 15% registered over the nine-month span from March until November. The tax data records from the U.S. Treasury suggest that the slump in tax receipts over the past nine months is the biggest ever recorded. The only historical parallel we can compare to is the 14% fall witnessed in 2009 during the Great Financial Recession. Carson has stressed taxes are sending an SOS signal saying that significant parts of the economy are experiencing severe distress. Anyone in Congress that is on the fence over whether a second stimulus bill is necessary needs to look no further than the tax data, Carson says. In other words, the level of economic wreckage is just unprecedented, and every day it passes by more Americans are falling out of the middle class straight into poverty. Fresh data released by researchers at the University of Chicago and the University of Notre Dame informed that the U.S. poverty rate has considerably climbed over the last five months, with 7.8 million Americans falling into poverty, which is a clear indication of how profoundly many are struggling after federal benefits had worn off. From June up to November, the poverty rate jumped to 11.7%, up 2.4 percentage points. 
Now, the economists maintain that such a high spike in poverty was driven by two main reasons. Millions of Americans cannot find jobs. Government assistance for the unemployed has abruptly dwindled since the summer. The average unemployment weekly payment was roughly $900 from late March through the end of July, but it dropped to about $300 a week in August, making it more difficult for the unemployed to find ways to meet their late payments. James X. Sullivan, professor at Notre Dame, says, we've seen a continual rise in poverty every month since June. There are two ways to counteract this upward trend in poverty, he says. One is a dramatic improvement in the labor market. The other is more support from the federal government. Given the state of the coronavirus, I wouldn't bet on significant improvement in the labor market in the short run, Sullivan said. At this stage of the collapse, poverty is remarkably higher than it was at the beginning of the year which shows us the long-lasting effects of the deep recession we've been experiencing for months. According to the data published since June, poverty has primarily affected black Americans, with about 1.4 million of them having their lifestyles completely crushed. About 5.2 million Americans with high school degrees or less have also fallen into poverty. The economists argue that these workers have been particularly hard hit by the crisis, having experienced the largest job losses since many of them used to work in low-wage jobs such as restaurant travel and retail positions. However, even in households with adult workers who are still collecting paychecks, poverty is not out of the picture. In fact, a recent report has described how thousands of military officials and their families have been suffering from food insecurity. In Fort Bragg, that's the largest military base in the United States, a food bank has been set up, and that is a sign of the times. This spring, the base at Fort Bragg has seen a 40% increase in requests for groceries. Similarly, America Serves, a network that provides support to military families, had their biggest service request in the organization's history. All over the country, the same story is repeated. Hunger groups say the lowest income families in the military have a specific set of challenges. For instance, military families often have more children than the national average. And ever since schools were closed, Children of these families who relied on free or reduced meals at school have no more access to them. Michelle Baumgarten, the associate executive director of the armed services at Fort Bragg, says a lot of kids who were getting breakfast and lunch at school no longer are. She says families were going from two incomes to one income, and that's the common thread as opposed to civilian families who managed to collect federal benefits and also qualified for food programs, considering military families are often provided with housing allowance that leaves them ineligible to receive food assistance. And that's a quirk in the law that Congress has repeatedly failed to address. Although military families are only a small part of the tens of millions of food insecure Americans, hunger experts say most people have no idea that military services often rely on external help to have enough to eat. Josh Protas, the vice president of public policy at Mazon, says there's something that's so unjust about it that the families who are making significant sacrifices for our country are not able to fully meet their basic needs. Prodas says the charitable sector doesn't have the capacity to fully address this issue, nor should it. I really think the Pentagon has really tried to sweep this under the rug. Indeed, authorities' response so far has been utterly disappointing. Now, Congress remains deadlocked over the next bipartisan stimulus bill. Democrats are choleric that they're being forced to choose either enhanced unemployment benefits 
or $600 stimulus checks for our citizens. Rep. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez even called the trade-off inhumane and barbaric, outlining that Congress is perfectly able to do both. She said, do they know that people in red states are hungry too? Or do they just not care? The New York Congresswoman exclaimed. But while things get heated in Congress and there's no sign of when a relief bill will be launched into the economy again, our collapse is only intensifying. And as all the bubbles in our economy are already in the process of bursting, for those expecting a return to normal next year, we're sorry to say that all the evidence is pointing to a return to a much deeper recession. It appears that 2021 is gonna be a really painful year. If you found this video informative, you will definitely enjoy Michael Snyder's book, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, now available on Amazon. And as always, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. See you guys on the next one, and thank you for watching Epic Economist.